Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be running you through the assembly of my brand new SimLab P1X cockpit. Now this was purchased here in Australia through Brett at Hybrid Racing Simulations, who is the Australian distributor for SimLab. And I wanted to quickly run you through the list of all the accessories that we've got that we're going to be assembling today. So we've got the P1X chassis. There's a couple of things on this list that we'll be doing in a separate video as well around the monitor stand and a couple of the accessories. But we've got the P1X chassis. We've got the triple monitor mount. Obviously, we'll be in a separate video. The quad monitor add on as well. So that's going to be really exciting because that means I'll finally be able to start doing some higher quality streaming and actually be able to read your comments as I'm driving. So very excited about that. We've got the button box holder. We've got the Next Level Racing Motion Platform V3 mounts as well. It's going to be really interesting to see how that all integrates with the system. As you can see, it's all mounted and it all did work, but I'll take you through that in detail as well. We've got the keyboard tray. We'll probably cover that in a separate video, I think. Now we've got the universal front mount plate here, which is what I've mounted my Simicube 2 on, but we also ordered the uh, Fnatic podium mounting bracket as well. So later on, I can do some reviews with the DD2 on a much more solid cockpit. So really looking forward to that as well. Uh, so much stuff that I'm looking forward to with this. This is really going to be awesome for the channel. So we also ordered the Fnatic Club Sport shifter side mount with tilt adjustment. So that's for the Fnatic shifter that you can see beside me here, as well as the handbrake. Uh, I've got the pedal slider base plate, which we did order. That unfortunately is going to be on back order for a little while. I believe they've had some holdups there with the whole coronavirus thing that's going on at the moment. And then we also have the caster wheel upgrade kit as well. So a whole bunch of stuff to go through today. I'm going to take you through the assembly. We'll time lapse most of it. I'll pause and sort of explain things as I'm going, as well as talk you through the whole process. But this is going to be from the perspective of somebody who's never worked with aluminium profile before. So pretty much a noob's perspective here. But by the end of the video, you should have a pretty good picture of what you're going to be up against when you're building one of these for yourself. Now, if you are wanting a more detailed assembly guide that goes through really, really fine detail, much longer video than this one's going to be, but I do definitely recommend Barry from uh, Sim Racing Garage's assembly video. That's the video that I've actually been using to guide myself through the process. There are a couple of little differences. There's one thing that they've changed in the design since that video was made, and I'll highlight that in this video for you as well. But I definitely recommend checking out Barry's video and giving him some love as well. So links in the description below for you guys to that. But let's get started on the assembly. So I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on the unboxing here, but I wanted to show you that each of the individual pieces of profile are wrapped. So the bubble wrap's wrapped around each individual piece. You can also see the cardboard protection extends beyond the length of the profile, which also helped protect it in shipping as well. The hardware was also individually packaged, so it was easy to determine what was meant to go with what, and there was no sort of mix up there. So that was really helpful as well. And you can see again, everything's individually wrapped, so there's no chance of damage whatsoever. <laughs> Now the T-nuts that they include with the kit are the spring ball type. Now this has got a couple of advantages which are important to note here. The first advantage being that you can insert them into the rails at any point along the channel. So you don't have to pull everything apart again if you forget to insert one, which is really cool, but it also holds them in place as well. You can see here, once I'd fiddled around and fidgeted with my fingers, I was able to get it loaded. You can see how it puts tension on there constantly so they don't slip around and end up getting cross-threaded. So the corner brackets, as you see here as well, have little locking tabs on them so they don't slide around and move out of position when you're assembling. So starting on the assembly now, we begin by inserting a couple of T-nuts, one on the bottom channel and one in the top channel on our two lengths of 40 by 160 profile. And we connect that up with our shorter piece, our 500 millimeter long piece of 40 by 160 at right angles to create our base plate. So you can see here, the orientation of the T-nuts is important. You wanna try and have the, the thread on the outside so that you can create a space between the two bolts when you tighten them up. Obviously, if they're sort of under underneath each other, it makes it really hard or impossible to tighten. So you just want to pay attention to the orientation of the T-nuts when you're doing that. So four corner brackets in total to create the back half of our base plate. Now you only want to do these up finger tight for now because it will make it difficult to insert this next piece. So again, T-nuts go in, paying attention to the orientation. So we want to measure a 420 millimeter internal gap here to coincide with the 500 millimeter length seat rails that we have included. Now Barry's video where he did the detailed review of this, he had 580 millimeter long seat rails. That has actually been revised by SimLab since the time that he made that video. So they're 500 now. So again, very simple, pretty self-explanatory to install the seat rails here. Now I do need to remove these again to install my motion platform v3 but i just wanted to show you this quickly before we move on to that
right, so next on to my optional caster wheels. Now, these are sold in sets of four, two of which have locking mechanisms and two of which are free spinning, as you can see here. So Simlabs actually recommends two of these kits if you have a heavier rig, so a heavy wheelbase or something like a seat mover or something like that. So what I did was I installed one kit on either side with the locking wheels on the furthest rear and furthest forward and the two free spinning in the middle. So pretty self-explanatory. I just spaced them evenly across the length and then we moved on to the motion platform. So two brackets here, pretty self-explanatory. Once again, they just screw to the two sides of the motion platform. The motion platform lifts in. You can see I've removed the seat rails here. Just installed them previously for illustration purposes so you guys can see how they're meant to work. So I wanted to slide this as far back as I possibly could because I'm quite tall. And again, just slot in your M8T nuts here. Screw everything into position. Make sure it's square, obviously, before you screw it all down. And then on to mounting the seat. So you may be lucky enough that your seat bolts directly to the motion platform. That's ideal if it does, because it means you'll have the minimum amount of height. In my case, I used two of the 40 by 40 pieces of profile that were left over from the seat rails, which I no longer needed, and used them as horizontal seat rails so I could widen the gap and mount my seat onto them. So again, measuring the spacing between the two sides using some sort of a set square or something like that, just to make sure all the measurements are exact. Make sure you've got it all completely square and then tighten everything down. And then once you've done that, insert some T-nuts into the top and you can mount your seat on top of those. Again, making very sure that we've squared everything off with our set square so that we have no issues with the alignment of the seat. Next onto the pedal plate. So it comes with two of these brackets, one for each side, 15 millimeter thick, so really sturdy steel. And uh, yeah, no chance of any flex whatsoever there. Now it's also got beveled and tapered screw holes on one side as well. So you wanna make sure you pay attention to which side you put which one, and also a little bag of all of the required hardware as well. Now in terms of mounting, you can mount this pretty much however you want. You can orient them forwards or backwards, depending on how far you need the plate to be away from you. And you can also mount them at different heights as well, depending on the channels that you mount your T-nut into. So lots of versatility here. We start off by inserting our two T-nuts for the rear. Get those screwed in position. Again, we're only wanting to finger tighten everything at this point. Slide our T-nuts into the front as well. Now you can see here as well, I've aligned the bracket with the front of the aluminium profile as well. That gives me a reference point so I can make sure that everything's square when I insert my cross members. So do exactly the same thing on the other side as well, making sure everything's completely lined up. And it's a good idea to quickly run a spirit level across the top as well, just to make sure that you've got everything completely flat before you install your cross members. So these have M8 threads tapped on the outermost channels, as you can see here. So that makes it very easy to just screw straight into position using some of the M8 bolts provided. Now you can see the screw holes will line up with the channel, but it will only line up on the 40 by 160 piece that's included for the two tapered screw holes. So you want to install the 40 by 160 closest to you if you've got the pedal plate oriented the same direction that I do. Obviously the opposite if it's spun around. Get your bolts inserted and finger tight. You don't want to tighten these down with your hex driver just yet because there is still another piece of 40 by 80 to install on the front. So moving on to the optional pedal plate now. Again, a really solid 12 millimeter thick piece of steel. So for now, we're just gonna be lining up the channels so that we can screw our profile down into position. We're gonna be mounting our pedals before we install this. And here you can see pedal plates all in position. So moving on to the wheel deck now, again, a solid piece of steel forming the connection between the 40 by 120 upright and the base piece, which is a 40 by 160 tapered on either side. So again, we put our T-nuts into position, paying attention to the orientation, slide it into position, use the screws provided, of course and just screw them down. Now you want to align this at the very bottom of the profile just to make sure you get the maximum amount of adjustability in terms of height. You're going to need that later on and screw down into position. Now you can tighten these all the way down at this point. You're not going to need to move these again. Repeat exactly the same process for the other side as well. And now it's time to get these installed onto the base. Now, because it's so critical to make sure that these are lined up completely square with each other, what I would suggest, insert your T-nuts into roughly the correct position. And then what you wanna do is you wanna line this up exactly with your pedal plate on either side. That gives you a point of reference because remember we measured that earlier on. Use the bolts provided again. So 
So at this point, you can tighten these down just enough that it's not gonna move around, but you don't wanna fully torque it just yet, simply because you are gonna to need to adjust it. Now, what I would also suggest is just measure the distance from the bracket to the end of the profile on either side, just to make absolutely sure you've got it completely square before you go to install your wheel deck. So next we move on to our wheel deck. Now the one that you're seeing me assemble here is an optional accessory that's compatible with the Midge T130 ST series, the Bodner Sim Steering Cole Morgan AKM Series 5X, the Lens MCS 12H, the Fnatic Club Sport wheelbases, as well as the Simi Cube 2 Sport Pro and Ultimate. So again, this is pretty straightforward. One little tip, you will want to snap the little tabs that we showed you earlier from the corner brackets here. Very simple to do with a screwdriver. They actually break off a lot more easily than you think these are just cast pieces so snap those off now there's two different length bolts included as well so you want to use the shorter bolt on the side piece and the longer bolt through the front and again pretty self-explanatory here we're just going to be installing four corner brackets using the bolts and the included nylock nuts as well Now the flat wheel plate that comes with the P1X by default doesn't require this assembly, it just bolts straight down to the chassis. The uh, optional Fnatic wheel plate, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on as well in another video, also does require some assembly as well. So just keep that in mind. Now the easiest way I found here to get everything bolted down and line up was to just sort of spin it around on the table, line it up on each side, and then tighten everything down. And once I had everything torqued down, I pre-installed my three M8 T-nuts as well, just for preparation into the assembly. So three on each side, six in total. So again, very self-explanatory here. It just slots into the profile exactly the way you would expect. Two on the bottom and one on the top. And we could, you could install more if you wanted to, but I figured this would be enough. This is the same as how Barry did it in his video. So I figured if it's good enough for Barry, it's good enough for me. A little bit of effort here required to kind of get it to slide into position, but we got there in the end. So make sure it's nice and square. Get these all tightened down and then it's time to install your wheelbase. So this is quite tricky to do on your own, but it is possible. You wanna make sure that you line up the groove on the front of the chassis. Now I made sure that I had all the hardware I was gonna need in my pocket so I wasn't having to reach around to grab other stuff and just slide the bolt through Install the nylock nut onto the back of it. I'll give you a closer look at this in just a moment But the most important thing here is you want to make sure that you don't damage the uh, guiding ring around the front of the motor So I kind of held it in position with my leg while I tightened everything down with my hands It's a little bit crude, but it got the job done and look honestly it wasn't too difficult It was it would have been a lot easier with another person But I was in the house on my own at the point where I was doing this so I managed to just get the job done by myself Which was fine <music> So with the wheelbase now fully installed, I quickly popped one of my wheels onto the wheelbase so I could do some fine tuning and adjustment to my seating position. Now I'm gonna do a separate video, which I'll be launching tomorrow if you're watching this video on launch day, or linked above my head for you right now if you're watching this later on, where I'll go through all the details of how to correctly set up a cockpit for your particular seating position. But for now, what I'm doing is basically just adjusting things to roughly where I think they're gonna to need to be. I adjusted to a 20 degree angle on the wheel itself, and then I loosened off the side plates here so that I could shuffle for the wheel back into exactly the distance that I wanted from my seat. So you want to be quite careful here that you loosen off the bolts enough that you don't end up scratching your profile as you slide it back. You kind of wiggle it back slowly. Just take your time with this. If you feel it kind of grinding, just back off and stop loosen things a little bit more. It is very easy to scratch, particularly the anodized black profile. So just be really careful, take your time. And then once you're happy with the position, again, go around with a tape measure and just quickly make sure you've got everything completely square. and then finally torque everything down. So well and truly onto the home stretch now, time to install my HE Ultimates onto the optional pedal plate. Now I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here explaining this simply because it's gonna change and vary depending on what pedals you're installing. But as you can see, there's lots of options there. There's lots of different bolts that are included, including these M6 bolts, which I used, 12 millimeter thick as we explained before, and absolutely no problems at all lining these up with the holes on my HE Ultimates. You can see the channels there to line up with pretty much any pedals. So we just got these all bolted down. And 
then time to install onto the rig. Now, one important thing to note here, as you've probably already figured out, is that the bolts on the bottom of the plate are gonna interfere with the profile on your pedal plate. So you are gonna need to use some little spacers. Now, thankfully they have included those as well. Now, what I found is that I needed to install a couple of washers under each one, otherwise the threads were a little bit too long to interface correctly with the T-nuts. So just take note of that as well. You can see here I'm correcting the issue, installing the two washers on each one. So this was actually the first challenge that I kind of faced with the entire assembly. Up until this point, everything had been completely self-explanatory, but it did take me a little while to sort of figure out exactly how to tackle that issue. But once we figured it out, we were all good. Again, make sure your T-nuts are all lined up correctly before you tighten them down. And I did also insert two washers underneath each one of these as well, just to make sure that the screws that are provided for the tapers lined up correctly and uh, we're able to screw all the way down into the spaces. So just be aware of that as well. You can see me here sliding a couple of washers underneath, but again, pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to figure out. Just tighten everything down into position, making sure again, obviously that everything is nice and square and you're good to go. So final piece of the puzzle now, moving on to our shifter and handbrake assembly. So again, very self-explanatory. We're simply installing a couple of angle brackets onto our pieces of profile that are included in the kit, one on either side. Again, making sure that we orient our T-nuts correctly so that we don't have any problems with interference between the two sides. So one facing inwards, one facing outwards, get everything tightened down. Now I put it as far back as I possibly could, but again, depending on the position that you want to have this, ultimately will depend on where you position it on the rails. Put your end caps on as well. And again, we've got this included bracket, which screws down, tape it on either side. Now I also purchased the optional tilt mount for my Fnatic shifter and handbrake as well. So that also comes with an included bag of accessories and you can mount this on the bottom of the shifter as well as on the side. So I'll quickly show you both options here. Again, you can see a nice and thick piece of steel, eight millimeters thick. So if you opt to mount this on the bottom, it lines up perfectly with the four mounting holes as you would expect. And as you can see, you can kind of slide it around to get the exact angle that you want on the shifter. But what I ended up doing was mounting it on the side using the included T-nuts that come with the shifter itself. So again, lines up perfectly with the uh, channels that are cut into the mounting bracket. So four screws into the T-nuts. And I found that this was the preferred mounting solution for me. We've got two included bolts and T-nuts as well to mount it onto our assembly. Again, two angle brackets to fix it to our wheel deck. And then it's as simple as just popping a couple of T-nuts into the inside of the rail. Now it can be a little bit tricky to get these in position if you've already got your seat installed like I did. So if you do have the option of installing your seat later, it might be preferable. And then simply screw the two M8 bolts into position. And then finally, as the finished touch, you can install all of your cover plates onto the exposed ends of the aluminum profile. Now you do wanna make sure you do this because the profile is quite sharp. It is quite easy to cut yourself if you don't. Okay, so first impressions. Look, I gotta say, my, my first impression of this whole thing is just the, the assembly process was an absolute pleasure. Now that sounds a little bit silly, but I mean, everything just went together so easily. And often when you're building things like this, you kind of, you're waiting for the next challenge. You're waiting for the next thing to go wrong. You're waiting for the next thing that's going to sort of have you scratching your head. And because right from the onset with this build, I just didn't have any problems whatsoever. I, I just really enjoyed the entire process of building this. It, it, was a, it was a fun experience. I was never sort of anxious and worrying about what I was going to have to deal with next. And it just, yeah, even though it took a long time and I'm not going to pretend that it didn't, 
it was just, I really enjoyed doing it. I spent probably a good day and a half just taking my time, putting everything together slowly. It doesn't need to take you that long. You could probably get it done in about six or seven hours if you kind of powered through it. But, you know, I just enjoyed taking my time and, you know, checking all the tolerances three or four times, measuring everything, and just sort of taking pride in making sure that it was done exactly right. So this is the end result. And I mean, as you can see here, I mean, I, I don't really need to say much because you can see the quality of everything here. Obviously, I've still got to mount up my control. There's a couple of little bits and pieces that I've still got to add to this, which we'll cover in later videos. I haven't added the keyboard tray or anything like that yet. I just sort of wanted to get it in its most basic form for you guys so you could sort of see the cleanliness and the uh, the quality of this. But there was no issues with cross-threading, nothing like that. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering about the seat as well. This is a RCC seat, and we'll be covering this in a lot more detail in future videos as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that feels. It doesn't look like the most comfortable seat in the world, but I am assured that it is actually extremely comfortable. And from just sitting in it for short periods of time, I can certainly attest to that so far, but we're covering that in more detail later. Now, one thing that I did sort of allude to during the assembly process was that this next level racing platform does add quite a bit of height. Normally, if you were mounting just the uh, the 4040 profile directly to the chassis, you would, um, you'd have your height basically down here. So using the official SimLabs mounting solution here, you can see if we measure the distance between the top of the base profile and the seat rails here, that would normally be mounted flush against that, obviously, if we weren't running the motion platform. You can see we've got a height increase of about 11 and a half centimeters there. So that's something that you just need to keep in mind. The motion platform does add a little bit of extra height. Now, I was able to get my wheel in the correct position and you'll see in tomorrow's video when I take you through the uh, correct adjustments there that that wasn't a problem for me. But you can also see that we are very close to the top. We've only got about another three centimeters of scope of adjustment before we would max out. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're, I'm about six foot tall. So if you were sort of, they say six, five or seven foot tall or absolute giant like that, you might have a few problems with height. But for most people, uh, you know, I don't really see this being an issue, just something that you do need to be aware of. Now we didn't have any problems with the pedals at all. You can see I've got a little bit of an unorthodox mounting solution here with the pedals tilted forward slightly. Again, I'll cover that in tomorrow's video where I take you through the proper adjustments and setup. But uh, because the HE Ultimate pedals sit very upright, if they're mounted like that, you can see they'd be completely upright. I've tilted them forward a little bit just to make it a little bit more comfortable for me to drive. That's sort of a personal preference thing, but obviously with the scope of adjustment that we have here, and you can see down here, you could mount this higher if you needed to, you could go one step higher. Obviously, you've got a huge scope of adjustment for tilting as well. So there's really no end to the amount of adjustment that you can have there. You can also flip this entire plate around and have it facing the other way if you want to have more length as well. So you'd have to be an absolute giant to need to do that, but it is an option as well. And obviously, you can slide it back this way if you need to as well. So I think, you know, probably the thing that impresses me the most, and this is obviously going to be the case with pretty much any aluminium profile cockpit, just the, you know, the infinite scale of adjustability that you have with these. And I mean, you could always add longer profile here as well if you needed to add extra height. But this is absolutely solid, no detectable flex whatsoever. So there you have it guys, really enjoyable experience putting this together and yeah, I, honestly I couldn't be more happy with this so far, everything's been absolutely fine, no issues to speak of whatsoever and I just can't wait to get driving with this thing. So I'm going to get stuck into building the monitor stand and adding some of the other little components and bits and pieces to this uh, in the next video. And yeah, hopefully we'll be up and running and able to do some more driving videos for you guys in the next couple of days. So again, very much uh, thanks to Barry from Sim Racing Garage for his really detailed uh, assembly guide on this cockpit. That was a massive help in me putting this together and it made things a lot easier. So again, I do recommend that you guys check that out. I've deliberately not gone into as much detail as he did in his video, you know, partly out of respect to him and partly because I didn't want to create exactly the same video that he'd already made. So definitely check that out if you're after a more detailed assembly guide than what we've covered here. But I think all the key components are covered in this video and this should give you a good idea of what you're up against if you choose to purchase one of these cockpits and what sort of quality you can expect as well. So thank you very much for watching guys. Leave a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss those future videos. We do have another exciting video coming up tomorrow as well where I'll be showing you how to correctly set up your seating position in your sim as well. So that's one to look out for. So thank you very much for watching guys. If you do want to help support the channel and keep videos like this happening there are some links in the description where you can do that as well but above all thank you very much for watching as always guys and i'll see you again soon bye